Hey folks, my name's Colin Rogers, and I'm a sustainable systems agronomist with Foreground by Bear. I'm here with Sean today from Environmental Tillage Systems going over the Solar Warrior, and we're gonna go over some tips and tricks on what you could know going into this spring, uh, what things will work on your operation. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate having the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, we've been here at the Commodity Classic Show. It's been a busy couple of days because there's a lot of people asking about strip till. There's an immense amount of uh, curiosity about that in the industry right now. And guys are seeing the value in what strip till can bring to their farm and they want to learn more about it. That's great. So Sean, we talked a little bit yesterday about strip till in the fall and the spring. Can you go a little more into our listeners and our viewers about what that would look like, what would you suggest to a grower when it comes to strip till? Would you go fall or would you go spring? Well, that's a great question and one that comes up quite a bit. And when when a customer comes to me with that, I try to understand their operation, what the timing of their, their practices that they're doing right now, uh, how harvest goes for them, and the area that they're farming. As we get further north, it seems like there's a lot of times the combine gets chased out of the field by the snow in the fall, and there's not always enough time to get the strips done. So the conversation with somebody that far north is going to be a little different than somebody at a more southern geography that's going to have a longer window in the fall to do their strips. So timing is, uh, excuse me, the, the time that we can work in the field is going to be a portion of what we talk about, but also the goals of what a customer is doing with their fertility program. Uh, if a guy wants to be putting nitrogen out there in his strips, that's probably going to lean us more towards the spring to be making those strips, uh, just because of more options that we have to be applying either a liquid UAN product, dry urea, or anhydrous ammonia. Anhydrous can go spring or fall, uh, but that's the only one that we're going to be able to do in the fall if a customer wants to be making fall strips. No, that's great. And you mentioned for uh, right there that, you know, sometimes we get chased out of the field. You know, sometimes Mother Nature doesn't play with us. Sometimes we run out of time when it comes to doing strip tills. So for a grower looking at this spring going into strip till, maybe even for the first time, what suggestions would you give them looking at just doing spring rather than looking at fall and spring? For just doing spring, if the field hasn't been touched yet, we still want to be respectful of the field conditions when we go out there. Uh, one of the biggest uh, I guess black eyes that can happen in strip tills when somebody goes out and makes strips in conditions that are less than ideal. Uh, we obviously can't wait for the field to be perfect all the time, but if we're going out when it's too wet, maybe too cold out there and we're not producing a nice strip, that's going to give us some challenges throughout the rest of the season. So if somebody's looking at a field that hasn't been prepared yet for this upcoming season, try to be patient when you go out there to make sure that you're giving yourself the best chance for success by going into good or favorable field conditions. You mentioned that sometimes we get chased out of the field in the fall, and, and I agree with that. Sometimes we run out of time, Mother Nature gets the best of us, and we get a lot of moisture out in the field and we just can't finish. So for growers looking to finish that operation in the spring or even starting strip tilling for the first time this spring, what suggestions would you give them in spring rather than in fall and spring? Yeah, with strip till, we do have the flexibility, especially with the soil warriors that we have. Uh, this one sitting behind us is set up with our coulters. The coulters can be a nice option to run in the fall to give you that nice uh, residue mixing, get the soil uh, uh, cut up like we want it to be so we have a nice zone that we're preparing for the following year. That same coulter setup is going to be great to run in the spring too, so it gives us that flexibility. So for a lot of growers, doing the strips in the fall can be their first choice or their their plan a if you will and if the conditions don't allow it or the weather turns on us then they can come back and finish those acres in the spring uh, and when we go out there in the spring we do want to make sure that we're still trying to get into some favorable conditions if the ground is a little bit too wet or too cold if the residue is uh, holding too much moisture in it we want to maybe give it an extra day to dry out so that we have the chance to make a really good and favorable strip out there and then follow that up with a planter Sure. Now talking about planning, let's try to use that as just a metric in the spring as when you might go out there and try to do strip till. How far ahead of what you would call normal planting conditions would you try to take a tillage implement into the field? So when we're making strips, we actually have some customers that will follow their soil warrior with a planter right away. Uh, in the same day, they're out there planting directly into those strips uh, and they're having a lot of success with that. So if we have good conditions in the spring and we're making strips that are uh, working up very nicely, we don't have too much moisture right there, conditions that would be nice to plant into, I will support a guy going out there and planting right into it. The other option could be to make a strip, allow it to lay for a few days, and then coming back with a planter. Uh, there is a lot of flexibility that we have when we're creating strips and, and tillage zones out there. So we want to be respecting the moisture level that's in the soil, uh, but what we found is our coulters do such a nice job of opening things up uh, and allowing it to be prepared for the planter. No, that makes a lot of sense. Now, a lot of times farmers, 
bring up the question around strip freshening. You know, sometimes they put that fall strip out there and they feel maybe they got too much rain, too much wind, and they feel their strips might not be up to what it should be this spring bringing the planter in. Do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, we want to get down and actually take a look at the field and understand what that strip condition is. Uh, just because there might be a little residue that moved over on top of that strip over the winter time, that doesn't necessarily mean we need to make an additional pass across the field. Uh, if we have soil that is warming up underneath that residue, or there's some areas where there's a little bit that's blown onto it, that can be something that we manage with the planter. A nice set of zone cleaners or row cleaners on the planter can move that surface residue off to the side and still get down to that nice healthy strip that we created underneath. There are some situations if you have a significant amount of residue that's moved over and you're worried about inconsistencies in soil temperature in the area that is covered with the strip and then versus the one that's exposed, that could be a potential to be able to go out there, freshen that strip up, not go to too deep of a depth, uh, just try to basically clear the surface residue and work in that top couple inches. That could be a nice chance to maybe freshen that strip. Uh, and that would also be a good opportunity to put some nitrogen out there. If you have a liquid UAN or dry urea, we could incorporate that with that spring freshening pass. But I don't want guys to feel as though that's a pass that they need to plan on making just simply to freshen up the strips. Because what we've seen in a lot of situations is that a properly set planter with some decent row cleaners can clear that surface residue and still give you a very nice zone to plant into. Sure. So it sounds like you're saying don't worry so much about residue, but worry more about the condition of the strips themselves in a field. Like maybe if it's a, a more inclined slope or a more steep pitch to your field that if you had a severe washout, that might justify it. But on the whole, the economics probably don't justify just taking it across the field unless there's a greater purpose to it. Yeah, I would agree with that completely. All right. Well, Sean, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, and if anybody is thinking about strip till or has questions about if soil warrior or strip tillage is a practice, we'd be more than happy to work with them and help them understand how it could be a good fit on their own farm. All right. Well, thank you, Sean.